Guess what? New York City wants to certify electric bike batteries, Utah wants off-road access for electric bikes, and Electric Cycles has a new bike that promises something kind of strange, if you ask me. New York is seeing a problem, and the problem is electric bikes and scooters catching fire. The city can't tolerate this, and in come the regulations. There's a lot of parts to these scattered requirements for electric bikes and scooters. New York City Council and Consumer Worker Protection, they discussed a bill to force e-bike delivery riders to take a safety course. Now, separately, a bill was introduced that would establish safety standards for food delivery service and force anyone doing these deliveries to have their device of choice meet local standards. Now, the local standards that they're talking about would just be certification by underwriters' laboratories that already exist for battery packs, chargers, and so on. Oh yeah, and the third-party delivery companies, they are supposed to provide a helmet to workers and a bell and lights and reflective material. And the e-bike companies or scooter companies, they have to have liability insurance to verify compliance with the safety regulations. So yeah, that's a lot of one more things that are added onto this laundry list of requirements. Overall, I'm kind of okay with these regulations, but I feel kind of bad for the delivery drivers, all of this being put on them. These poor saps can't be making a whole lot of money considering that they buy the cheapest bike possible to putz around a hazardous environment all hours of the day. Now, I'm going to guess that New York, being America's melting pot, has a lot of immigrants doing these jobs. Welcome to America. You have to buy one of these bikes that we certify. Oh yeah, here's a rudimentary set of lights for you. But really, a lot of e-bikes are also being used by rideshare companies, in-house delivery riders, and just people getting around. I've ridden in downtown New York myself, and it was kind of fun. My guess is that New York is going only after this fish that they can catch for right now. Perhaps in the future they'll crack down on every e-bike reviewer that visits their city, but at least I'm safe for now. Maybe. Okay, so moving on. The state of Utah, specifically Utah's legislature's Federalism Commission, they want electric bikes to be allowed by the Forest Service. Now, this issue stems from the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Forest Service banning electric bike use on national forest and grassland. Now, they claim that e-bikes of any kind are motorized vehicles. Now, the Utah Commission held a one-sided meeting inviting the Forest Service to discuss the issue, but the Forest Service, they didn't do anything. Now, Jason Curry, the director of Utah's Outdoor Recreation Office, he pointed out the inconsistency, saying, quote, National parks right now allow e-bikes anywhere they allow regular pedal bikes. And so they've done a similar policy in state parks. So both state and national parks, you can ride any bike anywhere you can ride a regular bike. And you also can ride one of these pedal assist e-bikes. Now, Curry went on to point out that the Federal Bureau of Land Management, they allow electric bikes almost anywhere. Now, on the other end of this, the Division of Wildlife Resources, they claim notable damage to habitat and also another organization called Wilderness Watch, they just don't want bikes of any kind. Now, unfortunately, this story doesn't really end because it's an ongoing discussion. If you ask me, it just comes down to preservation versus recreation. Utah grew in population in the recent past, and also this technology has grown in the recent past. More people want to be on the trails that these government agencies are simultaneously paid to protect. Now, electric bikes, they cause just as much damage to trails as a regular bike, which is not a whole lot. And categorizing them by weight is really ridiculous because a 1,000 pound horse could just as easily destroy the fragile dirt. But really the big issue is that these agencies have concluded that protecting the environment, it just means keeping people off of it, regardless of what they're on top of. Wilderness Watch is quoted as saying, Research shows that like all recreation, mountain bikes displace wildlife. And because they travel farther and faster than hikers or equestrians, they can impact a much greater area in the same amount of time. So from this, I'm going to guess that they believe that humans are so graciously permitted to dwell in cities and traveling too far into the domain of the wilderness, regardless of the method, is forbidden. But I want to know what you guys think. Let me know in the comment section. Next up, let's talk about electric cycles and their first electric bicycle. Not really. Okay, really, I'm teasing because electric cycles has been around for a long time. They made a splash with a cheap folding e-bike and they also followed along the path with a cheap folding trike and more recently, quite an impressive stout cargo bike. But now they're making a more traditional bike shape that is not following a major trend. Let's meet the Electric X-Peak. 
a hardtail hub motor fat tire electric bike. The first people who order get the racks, the light, and the fenders and a lock for free, which Lectric says is a $450 value. Now that sounds kind of overpriced for a set of accessories, especially for a company that otherwise delivers in affordability. Now the bike has fat tires, 750 watt hub motor, an integrated 48 volt 14 amp hour battery. Not bad for an MSRP of 1400 bucks. Electric claims, quote, our new Stealth M24 technology delivers a 400% quieter motor, which they compare to their previous motor. I really don't know how they're measuring that, but to me it sounds like either their earlier motors were really loud or their current one is really quiet. I'm gonna guess neither of these, I, I don't know. The quietness of a motor really isn't something that we measure all that often, so to me this one seems like a lot of marketing, but I would like to try it out. Now it seems like a good deal to me for the bike overall. Electric has been around long enough that their reputation has been firmly established. And I gotta say that this Electric X-Peak has one of the coolest promo photos I've ever seen. My hat's off to the guys for that one. But what do you guys think of Electric X-Peak? Will it make waves? What about New York City certifying electric bikes or Utah begging for access? Let me know in the comment section. E-Bike News is supported by you, the viewer, on Patreon. Other than that, I'm Mikey for Blue Monkey Bicycles, and I will see you on the later.